My name's Ted. I'm a, uh, a New Zealand firearms collector specialising in infantry small arms from the Second World War. Uh, this is something I don't ordinarily do, but I'm going to give a shout out to uh, a young guy that has a channel up on, on YouTube. Uh, his name is Marshall Zhukov, and he's been very, very helpful to me, giving me information about the Soviet family of weapons uh, as used uh, in the Second World War, particularly the, uh, the Mosin Nagant family. Um, as part of my collection, I've got most of them, but they were kind of an exotic rifle. Didn't have a great deal of information about the various different types, marks, and the service history. And Marshal Zhukov has become uh, the go-to guy, or one of a handful of go-to guys, uh, who has genuine expertise in the Mosin Nagant. He's uh, very, very well educated in uh, terms of the history. In addition to that, he's got a pretty comprehensive set of, uh, of gunsmithing skills. And if you have a look at his channel, you'll see he's done some really very, very good restoration jobs on a, a quite a wide variety of World War II firearms. So this is a shout out and a plug, Marshal Zhukov. Uh, any information that you want, assistance that you want, uh, video requests, etc., dealing with Soviet weapons, particularly and specifically. The Mosin Nagant family, uh, he's the guy to go to. Hello, this is Marshall Zhukov, and here we are together again on YouTube. This is something very interesting, and I'll get into the particulars of it, but for the time being, this is going to be a video that is representing two things. One is a video for me while I present this, but the other is going to be a uh, video response for Kiwi Ted Fernie. He's got a book he's looking to give away, and uh, I think this might just qualify for uh, his requirements for the giveaway. Now, I know I said to mention possibly an obscure uh, U.S. unit, you know, nothing like the 82nd Airborne, but uh, this actually kind of works itself into probably a little known U.S. unit that was formed in November 1942 and uh, went through the end of the war. So we'll just talk about a, a couple interesting things on this first, and I'm sure people have noticed all the holes in the front of this holster and on this flap here. As we look closer, uh, those seem to be pretty distinct looking imprints in the leather. And this one here, you can see there's uh, something round that was probably stuck in that hole. And right here we can see a shield type outline. And change an angle a little bit, we can see something circular, looks like, also that was there. Now this is a holster I picked up at a gun show. And I was looking through this guy, he had boxes of holsters. Uh, Luger holsters, one box was World War II, the other was World War I, so I was looking through the World War II box because I wanted to find a World War II holster for my World War II Luger. And this is what I ended up finding. The other ones kind of had high prices on them, so I was thinking, eh, man, I just want to find something that's going to be cheap, you know, I don't care if it's, like, ratty looking or whatever. I mean, not that this is, like, ratty looking at all, but the other ones were in nicer shape. I mean, this still seems to be in pretty good shape, but of the other ones, probably the ten other ones there were, this was the, the worst condition, I guess. So... I ended up actually paying $100 for it, which I was hoping to get it for a little bit less. And of course, he didn't know anything about any of this. He he had a, a very large selection of Lugers on his table, so obviously he's some type of collector and probably knows way more about it and holsters than I do. And said sometimes that U.S. troops, they'd capture these things and, you know, stick captured pins and whatever in here. So if these are actual, like, SS-type death head skull and crossbone pins that were in there, I mean, it'd be interesting to find out possibly if they really were, um, 
with the angle of the holes to where the uh, the pin would actually fasten. So the other reason I bought this wasn't so much for the front but the back. This is what's going to be part of the video response for Kiwi Ted. Um, you can see my uh, my blocking out procedure so nobody can read the name or serial number of the person who actually wrote his rank his name and his serial number on the back of this holster as well as his unit which is battery A 197 AAA automatic weapons battalion and then he scribed in the uh, Eagle in USA so at first I could not find anything on this guy by his name his serial number or his rank and here we can see looks like it's a DTU.41 with a Waffen out of 1319 I don't know I can't see it 133138 I don't even know what would be correct for that but for those that collect these and know about the front or the stamps there do share however since I couldn't find anything by name or serial number, I typed into Google the unit. The very first thing that popped up was a home page for this unit. And there's a, a synopsis of everything kind of like an intro to what this unit did during the war. And as I scroll down to the bottom, there's actually a PDF file that you can open and read this about 30 page book that was composed by uh, a company clerk. So at the very end of that book there's a list of all the people that were in the unit and this guy whose name is right under here happened to be on that list with an address at the time. So I get on back on the internet, back on Google, and I'm trying to figure out you know, if I can find any listings for this guy. And through the white pages and stuff and all that stuff you have to pay for, I found this guy still living in his hometown. So I called the local information number and said his name into the phone and they gave me a listing and a phone number. So I actually called this guy and I was gonna wait on this video until I got pictures and stuff from him and I sent him some pictures of this as well but uh, I really wanted to put something together that was gonna encompass the whole process and everything that I went through and any details that he has of this but he remembers the holster he remembers writing everything down on here he was very surprised when I called him and asked him if he uh, served with the United States Army during World War II and then read off the last four of his serial number and his whole unit information I mean obviously he had to know something was up and then I said well sir I've got an artifact here from the war that you wrote all of that information on and then it clicked in his mind it hit him he's like oh wow so he was uh, I was surprised myself as he's an 85 year old person and uh, we talked for about a half hour on the phone and we still got some more communicating to do through his daughter via email as he doesn't do technology I guess so I'll put a link to the uh, to the site of the unit and anybody that's interested can go through it and look at it but I mean they're heavily involved in the Normandy invasion through the rest of the war um, going through France and Belgium, Luxembourg, and into Germany. So the information that I did get, he recalled capturing it from a string of Germans that were surrendering near the end of the war. He didn't have any dates or anything. I'm still waiting to hear back on that information. But uh, he said he captured it from a string of maybe 10 or 12, and I guess took it from one of them, and he got discharged in 1947 and was coming home on a train and sold it to a buddy I guess before he got home I, I'm not sure if it was on the train or before the train or, or whenever but 
his buddy lived in Minnesota and he lived in a, a state nearby and uh, 1947 was the last he'd ever heard of it so for now Marshal Zhukov signing out until I've got more information and uh, more documentation on this on this holster and his story uh, to go with it more to come